Uh, not the anyone that came with us. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I need a person to start because uh, I... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah.
global protect this turn. <laughs> so it's like a burpees law, is it? Where like anything that can go wrong will go wrong if yeah. it works wrong. I'm like, yeah, like it didn't ask the entire time we were here. Now all of a sudden, you want to do Hello, hello. Oh. All right, long space. Oh. I'm used to like in the opposite, which is like. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So, yeah, you, so you were at like, like, it was at 30 something. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, 29. 29. Yeah. Oh, and I'll call the action. You think one slide must go here? Yeah. So make sure it keeps running. So. This global protection is on stage behind the scenes. It's all good. One thing I can like to look for is you. Yeah. I think like walking around and that is like. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Weiss. I'm with the Nevada Department of Business and Industry. We'll be starting the GoDaddy presentation in a few minutes. We're just trying to let everybody in the uh, um, resource fair know that it is on, remind them. So give us a couple minutes, okay? Thank you. Thank you. 
All right, uh, we're about ready to get started. Um, again, my name is Chris Weiss. I'm with the Nevada Department of Business and Industry, and I'd like to thank you for visiting the Nevada Small Business Resource Fair today. Um, I hope you're finding the fair's resource opportunities and uh, agency uh, represent, representatives out there helpful and encourage you, if you haven't visited all of the islands in the studio area and out in front, uh, please do so. Um, there is a lot of small business knowledge out there, so please take advantage of it. As part of today's fair, we're offering this learning session on small business marketing by GoDaddy. Um, to perform the session, we have with us Amy Jeanette and Herwin Gill. Amy is Senior Director of Integrated Marketing for GoDaddy, and Herwin is the Director of Marketing for GoDaddy. For those of you who don't know, GoDaddy is a global leader in providing e-commerce services for entrepreneurs and small businesses around the world. Um, as an all-in-one solution provider uh, in that area, they're in a great position to offer insight on why marketing is important, how to use it to increase your business, and some of the latest tools available to make it easy and efficient. Um, this learning session is being streamed on YouTube Live by the Las Vegas Clark County Library District and to our remote audience. Uh, we wanna thank you for joining us. And um, with that, I would like to introduce Amy Jeanette from GoDaddy and turn things over to her. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm gonna be very brief because Herwin, uh, my colleague is gonna be doing the majority of the presentation. Um, what we have to share with you today is, um, you know, the ins and outs of marketing, how to get your dis digital, ugh, digital presence up and going, um, you know, digital marketing like social media, selling on marketplaces, um, email marketing, et cetera. The highlight of the show is that we're going to talk to you about um, AI tools that will help you market your business more efficiently. Um, and so as part of the introduction of my colleague, I would like to read to you the chat GPT introduction for him. I have to take my glasses off so I can actually read this. So ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that I introduced our esteemed presenter for today, Mr. Herwin Gill. As the current Director of Marketing at GoDaddy, Herwin brings a wealth of knowledge and experience to the table. In his role, he has been focused on market strategies for services and previously served as the marketing lead for commerce and payments, driving innovation and growth in these critical areas. Before joining GoDaddy, Herwin honed his skills at American Express, where he worked both in the Phoenix, Arizona and London, United Kingdom. His impressive tenure at American Express saw him taking on multiple director roles in finance, marketing, and analytics, showcasing his diverse skill set and ability to excel in various domains. 
Kerwin's academic achievements are equally impressive. He holds a Master of Science a degree with a focus on finance from the prestigious London Business School. This strong educational foundation has undoubtedly been instrumental in shaping his successful career. We are truly honored to have Mr. Herwin Gill here with us today, and we eagerly anticipate uh, the invaluable insights he will share. Please join me in giving him a warm welcome. How's that for chat GPT introduction? Thank you, Amy and chat GPT. I have a high bar to live up to now. Yeah. All right, cool. So I'm glad that everyone's here. Um, so I heard that this audience is really focused around small businesses. So I did want to just get a bit of a poll. How many of you currently have a business? All right. And how many of you are thinking about starting one? Okay. And how many of you have an online website at this point? Okay. All right, that gives me kind of an idea who you guys are. So I think there's gonna be a lot of content that we'll, we'll cover to, to uh, help you promote and, and expand your business. But first, like, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Like Amy said, she covered a lot of my credentials that are probably you know, more on the resume side of things. But 15 years ago, I actually started a necktie company, right? I don't see anyone actually wearing neckties anymore. So I'm glad I'm not in that business. But I started that business off, um, it actually struggled. Like we would imported ties from China. We tried to sell them online and I ended up exiting, but it was like one of those small businesses that got kind of passed on. It didn't really grow. But what that did for me is it created this passion of learning a lot about marketing and how to grow businesses. And so what I'm hopeful here is that I can share some of the things that I've learned on my career journey that'll help you know, put you in a better position than I was. And 15 years ago, we didn't have the kinds of tools that we have now, right? So we have phenomenal tools, you know, both at GoDaddy and other competitors. Um, but then you also have this emergence of like AI. So we'll, we'll touch a bit on like how we can get those tools in your hand so that you're able to succeed at your, growing your businesses. So quickly, our agenda, what we're going to cover is just a little bit about brand. And that's going to thread throughout the online presence piece. And we'll go into marketing. And then finally, we'll touch on kind of the execution, right? Like how can we actually help you do the work? Um, the first few areas might just be more of like a little bit more of the ideas and what you need to do. And we'll just cap it off with how to do it. And then we'll even use some AI tools that I think are leveling the playing field between small businesses and uh, larger businesses that have more resources. All right, so I'm gonna start off with brand. And I want to touch on the importance of brand. So brand is kind of this abstract, high-level idea. But the reason brand is important is it helps provide recognition for your business, right? So one of the things you'll probably be able to do is recognize GoDaddy, right? So you can see that we have our logo. And outside, we use the same logo. We use the same colors. We use that throughout our presentation. But that helps you recognize who we are, right? And that also brings in trust, right? So because of the fact that you know who we are, you might've done business with us, you know we have a reputation, you know whether you can trust us or not, right? And hopefully you do trust us, um, but that's why we try to develop a brand. And that brand is also setting those expectations because of the trust. Is this gonna be a brand that's known for low cost or is this a brand that's known for high service levels or what is it, right? We'll anchor to that. So for example, Nike, we all expect to have items that are very athleisure, athleisure, right? They're focused on um, athletics and driving that forward. So branding is important in that sense because it'll kind of define who you are and what your business is about. And so what does it actually mean to have a brand and what does that word really uh, come across as? So there's a couple of things I'd like you to keep in mind, right? So the first is about relationships with customers. Right. So is your brand that's warm towards customers or are you more transactional, you know, where you're trading a product for 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 the funds? Right. Are you high touch where you're going to support them every um, step of the way or are you going to have them focus more on doing it themselves? Right. And then all of that will come down to like just defining the perception. So what you want to do is craft a brand that creates a perception of the business that you want to operate and run. So Walmart perception we talked about before, low cost, not a lot of people around to help you. And you can contrast that to something like Best Buy, right? So Best Buy's brand is very different 
you go there, you're going to have top-notch technology available. It's not going to have the best prices, but you'll have people to walk you through and help you think about what the right solution is for your business, right? But what all that culminates to is to come together into defining what we'd want you to think about as your brand identity, right? And that's what's going to distinguish you from the other players that are in, in the area um, and how you stand out separately. Uh, and a lot of that actually comes down to visual representation, including things like your logo, the fonts that you use, um, and that becomes something that's consistent across you know, the various areas of your business. So it'll be your physical presence, your online presence, your marketing materials, right? Um, presentations, you weave all that in so that it's all consistent, right? And what becomes the output a lot of that is a lot of that visual ID stuff that I have here, right? So that would be like establishing your logo. What colors do you use and continue to use them consistently? What kinds of images do you use? Do you use photographs? Do you use um, graphics that are more like cartoons? Like what kind of style do you pull out? What kind of fonts do you use? Do you use serious fonts or do you use something that's a little bit more uh, relaxed, right? So all of that will kind of establish that identity for your business and make it much more recognizable. But as you're kind of getting to that, like it's very important to think about, you know, what's the personality? of the business and yourself even, right? Because you are going to be a major component of your, of your brand. And so be authentic, be consistent, right? And I think authenticity actually helps you be consistent. Um, and then keep it relatable, right? So you want to think about who your customers are and does the brand resonate with them, right? So you don't want to have a brand that off mark that is geared towards um, you know, teenagers when the business is really going to be about, um, you know, trying to sell to seniors, right? So you got to make sure that there is that relatability for the audience that your business uh, targets for customers, right? So that seems like there's a lot there. What I, what I leave you with is when you're thinking about brand, yes, it's abstract, but don't let it be something that holds you back in terms of perfection, right? So it can be a lot of things that you need to do Try to just kind of craft a, a vision for yourself and work towards it and think about the tools that are out there, right? So I mentioned not having tools when I started my business, um, but some of the tools that you have now, for example, even at GoDaddy, we have GoDaddy Studio, which you can use to build your logos, right? So things like that will just help you get a quicker, faster start to say, hey, I can establish my uh, visual identity. All right, so if you've got your brand, the next step that I want to make sure everyone has, and I know a lot of you already said that you do have an online presence, um, this will apply to both folks that are setting them up, but also if you want to kind of tweak your websites, right? So when you get into kind of having a presence, your business probably exists in person, and some businesses exist solely online, and then others exist in both places, right? And so what we want to do is make sure that one, your brand is consistent in all places, but that you do have an online presence because nowadays that's actually one of the first places customers are going to go to learn about you and what your services are and what your offers are, right? Even if you're not selling directly online, that kind of becomes that, you know, the yellow pages of the day and times today to figure out who your business is and what they do. So when you're establishing your website, you want to make sure that, you know, you have a homepage that, you know, customers are landing on and it introduces your business. But you also want to make sure that it has a first impression that sticks with the customer, right? So you can have a, a lot of many other pages, but your homepage is going to be critical because that is where people are going to see it and establish a view of you in your business. So introduce yourself on the page, share the benefits of your products or services, um, and make sure that the pictures that you're using are you know, professional grade uh, photos, right? Because a lot of customers and prospects are going to be judging the quality of your product based on your website. So if your website is not professional, they might assume that your business isn't run professionally. So you wanna make sure that you are elevating your website so it, it's consistent to the quality and level they can expect to come from your um, business as well. And the last thing I have here is something you hear called call to action. And what that really means is just being clear on what do you want the customer to do, right? So there's a lot of websites that exist out there that are just information, right? Um, but make sure you're clear on what you want the customer to do. Do you want them to call you, right? Do you want them to buy your product right there? Do you want them to be referring you? Do you want them to email you? Like, what is it that you want from the customer that's visiting, right? The customer's 
obviously they're for information for themselves, but you have to nudge them forward with a call to action to say, okay, well, you know, you're here today, you know, first time here, I'll give you a discount. You can um, go ahead and purchase product or call me and learn about the services that I offer and book a consultation, right? So make sure that your page is covering um, a call to action and leading the customer to the next clear action. And so Amy mentioned, like, we use a lot of like AI tools and I'll cover a little bit of how you can actually use that to create some of the content. Cause one of the hard parts about a, uh, creating a website is that there's a lot that you need to write up and talk about your business. So we'll go over a little bit of how you can generate some of that a little bit um, faster and more seam seamless. So if you have your page and up and running, the next thing you want to get to is making sure that you can showcase what you're offering. And so a lot of um, website uh, editors and developers, what they'll offer are templates. And templates are a great way to take best practices and really show off your products. And so GoDaddy, we have a lot of customized templates depending on what industry you're in. So we'll make sure that we're trying to showcase your products and offerings in the same way that your industry wants to present it. But we've thought through things like, what should a product um, details page look like? What information needs to go there? Where do we need pictures? And what information uh, needs to be shown there? So that's the kind of thing that you wanna make sure you're getting when you're developing a website is you have something like a template that'll guide you to how to configure that site. And of course, like people are coming there to learn about either your service or your product. And the more you can show it, the better it's gonna be for the customer to resonate, right? So if you can show them, if you have a landscaping business and you can show pictures of some of the output and say, hey, look, there's a, a before and here's an after of something that I've done um, from our customers, like that's gonna go a long way, even more so than words to convince them that, hey, this is someone that I can work with and trust to, to do the job for me as well, right? And if you're selling products, um, what's crucial is to have very high quality images but also a variation of images, right? So if your product comes in multiple colors, make sure you're showing the multiple colors. Make sure you're showing the multiple angles, right? I know for myself the other day, I was shopping for a speaker and I didn't know what inputs it had and it didn't list it in the, in the details. And so I'm trying to like figure out from the picture, like what plug does it go in there? And they didn't have a picture of the back of the item, right? And so customers will try to like learn things about your product through the pictures. So try different angles, make sure the lighting is good so they can see, see it clearly and crisply to see um, what it would look like in person. You, in a way you're setting the expectation for what they're gonna get uh, when the item is delivered or the service that they'll receive. And so you wanna make sure that that's clearly communicated and you're putting your best self forward on that, right? Yes. Scientific research situation to show the biologists in action, like in your case, like I don't know, if, like images will do the justice, but I imagine that the customers that are, are looking there are going to value you based on your product, which is probably the research that you've done before, right? And so I think ways of showing that, like there are different things that you can symbolize. You can either actually have links out to some of the work that you've done before or you could use images or logos of customers that you've served, right? So you'll see the common thing that, that a lot of companies will have is they'll have a listing of like major companies that they've worked with to demonstrate and build that, that trust as well, right? So that's a, a variation of like images um, that you'll see often used on these websites. Yeah, of course. All right, um, another thing that we don't often see on sites, but is a tremendous advantage is having um, quotes or testimonials. Um, so your customers might have said something good about you naturally, but you can also ask them, right? So if you have a customer and it's a good customer, you have a good relationship with them, you can get their permission to put something on your website that says, you know, what a, a good experience they had with you, right? And the reason we want to do that is you want to build what we call social proof. You want them to be able to think about, hey, I, that customer had a good experience, so I'm probably going to have a good experience. And it starts just giving more evidence that, hey, I can uh, deliver on what, what it is that I'm, I'm selling. So testimonials are one way to do that. And that can be either quotes or you can have videos recorded of your customers as well as a way of kind of proving that um, the, they got the value and they were happy and satisfied with the service that they, or product they received. Now, Reviews aren't always positive, right? So we all, you know, have reviews that come up on, you know, Yelp, on Google Maps or Facebook, and they're not always going to be positive. 
But there's two things that I want to like encourage you guys all to do is one is always respond, right? Even if someone has something negative to say about your business, make sure you are responding. And the second one is to address it with authenticity, right? Often it's a one-sided story, right? Um, I know I've had really bad experiences at restaurants where I'm just in a rush and I don't get my check for uh, many, uh, you know, too long and I'm frustrated. But there is the other side of the story. If you're a business owner, like you can go on there and say, thank you for the feedback. Um, apologize for, for the, the lack of service at the end there. But honestly, we're short staffed and we're doing all that we can to make sure that you're getting the appropriate service, right? And so by addressing some of those negative comments, it keeps people um, thinking about your business still. It doesn't deter them to go in a different direction. Whereas if you leave the negative comment and you don't respond, um, it sets a different image of your business. It sets that, hey, I don't, I don't value the feedback of my customers. What you want to convey is that you do care about the feedback of your customers, even when they don't have the best things to say about you and that you're learning from that so you can grow and become a better business yourself. So if you have a couple of those items on your website, the other thing that we want to just touch on is pricing. Now, pricing can become a very complex item to talk about, but there's a few things that we want to just make sure are highlighted, right? Prices should obviously always be easy to find, right? In some services, it might not be as easy. So you might not think about, hey, do you ask them to, to reach out to you for a quote if it's a custom service? But if it's a product and you do have a set price, make sure it is visible because that's going to be one of the defining factors for the customers. And then you also want to make sure that you're setting your price in such a way that you are able to offer discounts to certain customers, right? And what that does is it shows that you're willing to reduce your price to gain new customers. So you might all offer a discount that you can highlight as you know, a value for the customer. So you would have originally paid, here's an example of um, paying $4.99 and now it's discounted to $1.99. So it shows that for the customer that they are getting a bargain, but it also creates a sense of urgency to say, okay, well, I know this is on sale now, should I go buy this product, right? So that's one thing that we can do with the pricing. We can also do that through limited time offers. So you might wanna consider whether you say, hey, this price is available for X amount of time, it's gonna go away at the end of the month. So make your decision at the end of the month or in the next week, if you wanna get the best price available. The last thing I wanna to touch on here would be around creating um, a comprehensive view for the customer, what they can expect in costs, right? So sometimes you know, we can leave out things like shipping costs that are additional to what the customer is gonna pay out of their pocket or tax, right? What we wanna do is make sure that you're transparent about that so that the customer doesn't get to the end and have a negative experience. I don't know how many of you have had this experience, but I've shopped for things where I'm like, oh, this is really nice. And you go all the way to checkout to find out there's a bunch of fees that get added on, right? And that changes your mind. And that leaves a bad impression of that brand, right? Like even if it was only $10, but the fact that you didn't tell me up front and you stuck that in at the end, it kind of makes me think that, hey, this business is not really being uh, a genuine, right? So uh, think about those additional fees and costs that might uh, be incurred for your business and try to show them up front so the customer knows what they can expect, right? And of course, if you're selling online um, and even offline, actually, you got to make sure you're able to accept payments. For online, obviously, it's very important as someone's checking out, you want them to be able to process that and you want to make sure that you're accepting the right payments. You wouldn't want to have a customer turn around just because you don't accept a certain card. Um, so you want to make sure you're comprehensive or you're accepting PayPal, the, the items that are going to be important for your customer base. Um, so that's one aspect to think about. The other one is how do you conduct your business? Is it an in-person business or is it solely online or is it a mix of them, right? So you might want to uh, have a, a point of sale system that connects to your online website or you might want to have an ability to pay on your collect payments on your cell phone, right? Um, so if you're doing services, I think that's you know it's a great tool to have to be like, hey, I can just actually use my cell phone to collect payments. So um, your website would need to be connected to a payments provider, um, and our uh, solutions, at least, um, they include payments. So you have an, uh, a payments uh, protocol already set up, but you can also add on point of sale or mobile readers. Um, and we try to make sure that's an all-encompassed solution because otherwise it gets into all the technicals of how do you make sure you can accept payments um, or not, right? And if you don't have a physical product that you're selling, you still want to have services that you're offering. Um, there are options that you should make sure your website have, like being able to book online appointments, right? So if you're a hairdresser, 
not having that is going to hurt your business because someone might choose another place where they can book immediately. So you want to enable people to book online, but as owner operators, often we don't even have the time to be answering all calls and doing all the scheduling without upsetting the customer that's right in front of us. And so that also kind of creates that mind space for you where your customer can choose when they want to book, they can see when you're available, and you can continue doing other parts or working on other parts of your business to improve. So when you're considering a website, like that's one thing that uh, you should be focused on and taking a look at, is that possible to do, right? And um, certain solutions like ours, we do actually have a function where you can book an online appointment and it'll show up on your um, payment device as well. So there's a, a seamless transition of, okay, well, this appointment was booked, now I got to collect payments for it. And you can connect, collect payments even in advance if you want, right? So that's all up to um, you as a business operator. All right, so that portion, we kind of talked a little bit about having an online presence and some of the, the things that you can tag on to make sure that you're having best practices there. The next part I wanted to talk on was how to be your best marketer, how to actually get those customers, right? So the place to start, I think what I've seen for myself is it's, it's very easy to gravitate towards the things you're hearing out there. Hey, like social media, get on there, get on Facebook, get on TikTok, um, start doing different things. But that's not where you want to start. You want to start and define first, who are your customers? What did they look like, right? What are their demographics? How old are they? Where do they reside? And then you have this concept of like psychographics, which is like, what do they value? What are they interested in, right? Are they interested in cars, right? Or are they interested in fashion? Like what are the things that are um, common among your customer base? And then you think through, you know, what are they trying to accomplish? What are the challenges they have? Um, and that'll help you even actually become more crisp on the value you're adding as a business so you can overcome those challenges. But from a marketing perspective, you also want to tag on two other things, which are one, who influences those decisions, right? Um, when we're buying something that might be a B2B product, I know often we'll actually talk to other business owners and say, hey, what was your experience with so-and-so? And that might be a person that you want to know is an influencer. Or do people go to online reviews and do the reviews influence what product you end up deciding on? So you want to be clear on are those influences there or not? And the last one is just like, what is that buying process? What does the customer also expect, right? Um, do customers buy this directly online or do they tend to have a consultation first, right? So do they need to talk to you and learn about your services and how it could be tailored um, and then uh, check out later on? Or do they just purchase it all at once um, up front, right? So that clarity around your target audience is going to help quite a bit for your marketing because the next stage of this is figuring out where your audience is. So if you're running a, a restaurant, for example, a lot of people would say, you know, your customer is someone that um, is traveling, for example, right? Um, is planning on eating out or celebrating. Well, those folks, if you think about where they are when they're looking for a restaurant, they're probably on Google Maps. Right. I know I'm traveling. I'm from Washington and we needed to find, you know, a place to eat. The first thing you do is you open up Google Maps and you search. So when you connect your audience to what is my audience doing naturally and where are they going for solutions, that'll help make it a lot easier for you to reach that customer. And so there's other things to think about. So search is one example. Like, yeah, a lot of us go to search naturally so that a lot of your audience might hang around there. And then you have places like Marketplace. Right. So some of our customers are probably already on Amazon, right? They're already, they're going to Amazon as a place to shop for certain things, or they're going to Etsy to look for certain um, products. And so if you get plugged into those marketplaces, there, the customer is already there. And now your offering is there. So you're kind of making that market and helping them uh, get closer to that purchase. Um, so you want to make sure you're on those marketplaces. And then you get into areas like social media. If your audience is surfing uh, on social media, you want to be able to reach them through that. And we'll go through some of the more advanced tactics there, or if they're reading publications, video, et cetera. But you get the concept where it's determine who your audience is and then determine where does my audience hang out so that I know that I'm actually reaching them in the right place, right? If you're trying to target um, uh, an audience that is focused online and you're sending direct mail or phoning them, then you're going to have a mismatch. You're going to spend all your money on marketing that's not going to drive any results, right? All right, so marketplace, I just wanted to touch on this as well because 
if you have a physical product, um, you can plug into some of these platforms like Amazon, eBay, Etsy, um, Instagram, and Facebook, which they've already got people coming to them and you can sell there. Now, this sounds like it'd be very technically challenging to do, but there are solutions, um, including our uh, own websites and marketing solutions that enable you to just plug right in. So you put the inventory in for your website, you can plug it into a marketplace and start selling in all those various places, right? Um, and that makes it obviously a lot easier and more accessible to the customers that you're reaching for. And ideally it is one platform, right? If you try to plug in one by one by one, you're gonna find more of your time as a business operator getting sucked into managing each individual place and not having a comprehensive idea of how your sales are doing. Um, by using tools or platforms that allow you to do that, you'll have a better idea of how does it all add up, right? All right, social media. How many of you guys are using social media for your business right now? All right. So a few of you are, uh, seems like about half the audience. Um, social media is an interesting one, right? Because it is the area that we all tend to gravitate to. A lot of customers and prospects are spending time on social media, but you've got to figure out the right balance. And one of the things that we often see is that um, businesses can go too far on the balance of asking for sales, right? Or offering promotion. Social media is a lot about building that trust with customers and you've got to do that through delivering value to the customer more often than you're making an ask right so you want to spend 80 percent of your um, time and content on sharing things with the customer about the areas that they're interested in and the area that you serve right so for godaddy um, we spend a lot of our time and effort on you know helping businesses right um, how do we put out information that helps them succeed we're not necessarily trying to sell anything but we're trying to just establish ourselves as an expert in the area and give value. And then the other 20% of the time, you'll have earned that right to ask and you'll have demonstrated the value that you're gonna bring, right? Either through your product or um, through the services that you offer, right? And then the last thing I wanna to touch on this one is just that balance of how often you're posting, right? So um, even though you might have that 80-20 split, you can do that in all in one day or you can spread it all over a month. and like you'll need to figure out for your audience how frequently the right uh, cadence is, right? Some places it's okay to reach out to a customer on a day-to-day -day basis, but I know other areas like it's actually frustrating and it can hurt your business. So we'll talk about email in a bit, but that's one area that I know someone, a business is emailing me every single day, the third day there, I'm going to unsubscribe, right? So you got to figure out that cadence of like, how frequently am I reaching out? And the same thing happens on social media, right? If you're putting out too much content, you're going to dilute the value that you're adding. So you know, you'll need to think about those kind of trade-offs and, and really right set your business so you're in the, the ideal spot for your customers. Um, the other thing to think about on that cadence is what platform you're on. Some platforms are daily platforms where customers are visiting. Other ones are less frequent, right? So have a thought about like which platform makes sense to touch my customers. Is it Instagram? Is it Twitter? Is it TikTok? And what would that balance be of how often I'm reaching out to them and should it be in different places? Now, um, one of the challenges that we have as businesses is if we're not consistent, we're not gonna be on top of mind of our customers, right? And the other challenge that we have is time. Like we don't all have uh, time to be writing articles, you know, Monday, Wednesday, uh, Friday. And so what, what I encourage you guys all to do is to think about content calendars and so it's a, uh, an idea of like saying, hey, I'm going to publish, you know, these articles going forward and they're going to be submitted or posted on social media on these days. And that those content calendars should include, you know, big holidays that might be related to um, the work that you're doing, or it could be um, special things that are related just to your industry, right? And so if there are things that are related, like if you have a coffee shop and it's National Coffee Week, that's a week that you might want to send out communication. And so you plan that all out, have an idea of what you want to do over the next six months, and then you can batch some of your, your materials. So you can produce the content um, sitting down at once and writing a few articles or having that ready to publish, but not necessarily needing to publish at, at that moment. Um, and then you can also keep um, you know, on top of what's happening in the seasons, right? So when you have the holidays coming up, what are people looking for? Gifts, right? So how do you make your publications that are more relevant there? Um, and the, 
one of the things I want to just call out is that we also offer solutions that have those kind of calendaring functions to say, hey, I want to schedule these posts out. How do you plan it out? And then actually get it pushed to the platform of your choice. So let's say you get out there, you've made some posts um, and it's starting to resonate, right? So first thing you want to do is make sure that if you are getting traction and that could be in the form of likes, it could be in the form of shares, right? Um, it could be in the form of calls if that's what you're asking the customers to do. If you're getting traction, first you want to assess, is it the right audience, right? If you have a, a lot of likes, but they're from people that are not interested in your business or never in a purchase, that is not an effective um, uh, advertisement. So track the performance, but match it and marry it up with your target audience. And then as you find the things that are working, you put money behind it as well, where we, what we like to term it as is like boosting your uh, content, right? And so you can put like little as $5 behind your posts that you have to get it in front of more people that might not have seen it. it the, the content you published will circulate with the audience that you have, like your friends, the people that are already signed up and following your pages that you, you might be reaching already. But as you're thinking about growing your business, you also want to start reaching folks that haven't heard about your business already. And so you put a little bit of money behind those posts that are working and it'll start being put in front of um, additional um, prospects and customers, right? And a lot of platforms actually build that in. Um, our platform has that. Um, I think, yeah, competitors platforms have that as well. When you post on social, you can um, put an amount in and it can, again, literally be as little as $5 just to get, you know, a few hundred uh, additional um, impressions in front of customers. And so the other thing that I want to talk about is email marketing, right? So one of the CTAs you can actually have with social and your website is to have customers sign up for an email list, right? And so you can start building an email list where you have customers that you can reach out to on a periodic basis, remind them of your offering and um, provide them with discount codes to get them to um, cross that finish line and purchase your products, right? So. Um, when you're even thinking about your website, you want to make sure you have that capability and an item where they can sign up for an email list. Now, people don't just want to give away their email list for free. So you got to be very clear on what's in it for the customer, right? So it might be education, right? So it might be, hey, we're going to teach you about tips on how to maintain your lawn on a, a weekly basis, right? And so you might have content like that, that's education. And then every so often you'll jump in and say, but I'm also offering a promotion. You know, I do this as a professional and you're getting an idea of the things that I look after um, and encourage them to buy your product through a, a call to action, right? So you wanna be clear on what the customer is getting out of it. You wanna make sure you're rewarding those customers um, as well, because these are ones that are willing to spend time and uh, attention on your business as well, right? Um, so I leave you with those and make sure you have a call to action. Even when you are sending those emails, what are you trying to get the customer to do? Are you trying to get them to come back to your website? Are they, are you trying to get them to come in person to your business or call, or what is it that you're trying to get your customer to do for you? All right. So that should be a, a neutral level for websites um, and marketing. So now I'm going to jump in a little bit about making it happen. And I know I did pepper some of that in, but I'll talk about um, just, you know, tools and, and how to think about those. Um, and then we'll jump into a little bit of uh, examples using AI to do some of that work. So um, what I'd heavily encourage everyone to do is think about what tools can you use for your business, right? Whether it's GoDaddy or someone else, this is going to make your life tremendously easier. And one of the things that I think is tremendously important is to find a place where you can do most of the work that you need for your business in one place so that it's linked, right? If you're running your business in distinct from online versus in person, you're not gonna have a good read of your customers. You're gonna have to put that together yourself and so you lose that kind of value. Um, and so if you have a solution where you can do multiple things, that's just gonna make it a lot easier for you to um, uh, work with, but it's also gonna allow you to, to use your assets in different places. So for example, you might have a solution where you can build your logos, but then you can take that logo and post it onto your website or post it onto your marketing, right? That'll be a lot easier in one contained place. The next thing I'd encourage everyone to look for is templates, right? So templates are just pre-configurations of saying, hey, this is what the website's gonna look like, or here's what my social media post is gonna look like. So I can get you started off in terms of the format, the 
text and, and what else do you need to include? And so it's just a bit of a shortcut for you to get started. And a lot of tools do provide that. And of course, there's the measurement aspect as well, right? Um, to make sure that you do have that tracking to say what's happening with my performance. Um, so you know, you know it's working. Last highlight I'll have here is like, make sure the tools fit your business, right? Some tools are made just for online businesses. Some are made just for uh, in-person businesses. Some are made for services only, right? So you wanna make sure that your tool is either flexible enough to service multiple areas, or you find a tool that is catered to your industry so that it can do the things that you want. For example, if you're running a salon, you do wanna be able to book appointments um, online, right? So that would be an area that you, you uh, ensure fits your business. But if that's not your business, you might not care about that at all. So um, when you're evaluating tools, make sure that it's uh, appropriate for the needs of your own business. And of course, like we have tools at GoDaddy and we've seen you know, tremendous success with customers building them out. Um, and you know, one of the stats that I had here was like, we've seen customers have an 18% increase in revenue over 12 months after you know, using the websites plus marketing solutions that we offer, right? Um, not to say it's only with through GoDaddy uh, or push you by it, but um, that's one of the options you have there. So as you're thinking about that, you know, one-stop shop tool, the other aspect you'll want to consider is that email portion. So we talked about email and how we can convert those customers into someone that's paying and generating revenues from them. And so you'll want a tool that also has um, elements of automation in there. Um, so for example, when someone signs up for your, your list, you want to send them a welcome email and saying, hey, thank you for jo joining my, my newsletter or my mailing list. And here's what you can expect from it. I'm going to contact you once a month. Um, but then you also want to have triggers for when a customer makes a purchase. You want to you know, reply back to them through an email and say, thank you for your purchase, right? Um, and so you want to have certain automations that are built in. And you can do that as a one-off to start off with. But of course, like as you scale your business, you need more of these things to be based on triggers. And one thing I want to kind of just like call out there, my colleague Amy, who was up here earlier, was, was pointing out to me is like thinking about what we call like cart abandoners. And these are customers that come to your website and they thought about your product and maybe they added it to the actual cart, but they didn't finish checking out. And so some tools um, will off, uh, offer a capability to email those customers and say, hey, by the way, we know you left um, this website without buying something. I'm going to give you a discount or I'm going to give you an, an additional offer to get you across that finish line, right? Um, to overcome whatever uh, hesitation they might have had there, right? All right. And now I'm just going to get into like the cutting edge, right? So now what we're seeing in the evolution in, um, in industry is AI. Curious, how many of you guys have heard of like AI or chat GPT? All right. So it's game changing. Um, there's a lot of technology and inputs that are going into these models and they're predicting what you can do going forward. And what this means is that in my mind, this is starting to level the playing field between big businesses and small businesses. And it's going to empower you to be like a superhuman, right? You can do things that you wouldn't have been able to do uh, before. And I'll show you some examples of that. ChatGPT is the most popular tool that you've probably heard of. There are some others that do like images. So if you need to develop uh, images, you can look at DALI or Midjourney is another. Um, I encourage you to actually try out all of them. Uh, I'll focus on ChatGPT because it's the most accessible uh, for most people. And I'll, and I'll go through a little bit about how we can use those to generate content and give you some examples. And these tools are useful in all kinds of areas. They're very generic. So if you wanted to come up with a business name, they can help you come up with a business name. If you want them to generate content for you, they can actually generate the content. Um, they can reply to customers for you or at least write up the reply. Um, so there's a, very many ways that you can leverage these tools and I'll make it more tangible as we just jump into some examples here. All right, so just to highlight, so actually I'll just start from scratch here. So if you were interested in going to um, ChatGPT, just go to chat.openai.com, right? And so here you'll just see a bit of a platform. It's just like messaging anyone. You have you know, a platform where you can just start chatting um, with the technology, right? So it's not a person, it's uh, artificial intelligence. It's not, um, it, it's not gonna read your mind or anything and it will produce things that could be not true, right? So it's very important that you guys are filtering this, but I'll, I'll show you some examples, right? So let's go back to like what we were talking about earlier. So let's say you are building a website. 
So who here doesn't have a website for their business and would like to create a website? All right, I'll use you as an example. What's your business on? Uh, sure. Sure. Okay. So let's say you're building that website and you know, you got a template and the template says, hey, you need to put an about me page, right? So we can ask this tool to help us um, write a little bit about your, your business. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I'm gonna tell it what I want it to behave as. So I'm gonna say, you are a marketer. I am building a website. So I'm writing, you're a marketer, I'm building a website, I need you to write an about me page. My business sells jewelry. What kind of jewelry is it? Cool. Custom. And wire wraps? How long have you been in business? Just based on that, we'll give it a shot and see what it comes up with. And we can give it your business name. So it's just filling in like a little thing saying, hey, you put your business name here. I can't even type that fast, right? <laughs> And it just keeps going, right? And so, like, remember, I only put in like two sentences. I wasn't like writing the whole thing. It's just, it's going on and generating based on what other people have on their websites and the information is collected. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Can you do it by saying to the chat box that this is my name? They can Google you and then create something from it? Yeah, so there are. I feel like uh, ChatGPT doesn't, but if you use Bing, Bing does. So it can surf the web and it can use uh, details from there. So yeah, if you've already got a, a page and you want it to get information from there, you can absolutely do that, right? And so, yeah, there's, there's a lot you can do that. And so even if you have an existing website, like I actually encourage you to go in there and, and try like changing something, right? So like this, I look at it and I'm like, I, you know what? My customers are short on time. They don't have time to read all of this. I want a shorter version. Right, so I can actually go in there and say, um, rewrite that as a single paragraph. So let's see if it listens. Absolutely, you can tell it to like be like a celebrity if you want, right? Write this like Snoop Dogg would talk. <laughs> <laughs> Or how do you try it? I'm gonna stop because it's, it's still way too long. I think you have to give it like hard limits. Um, but let's rewrite that as a poem, right? It's thinking, it's thinking. Right? So Welcome to this realm where wire and gem entwine, your business unfolds a jewelry world divine, right? Like, and so if you had a brand that was more poetic, like you could get this to do this kind of stuff for you where, I don't know, this would take me hours. Like I'm not creative with that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, after they've done that, so they can translate it. They can do the three things if you want to translate. Yeah, you can translate it. Um, so since these models use like what information's out there, like so if it's a language that's common on the internet, like it will, right? Like Spanish is fine, French, it's fine. But if you start going to like, you know, more narrow languages, um, especially ones that have different characters, it, it wouldn't work as well. So I don't know Spanish, but like, let's say, do you speak Spanish? Yeah. Yes, okay, let's say that I wanted to help you have a Spanish version of this, right? Like let's um, rewrite. And you could, you could talk to it in Spanish too, actually, right? 
So how is that? Is that accurate? Okay, so. What is the actual page that you're doing that on? So this is chat GPT. So you go to chat.openai.com. So they will get pictures, and then this is done, so then you can read this, of course, and then this is Yeah, exactly. So I, I wouldn't so like take all of it and just put it on your page, right? Like if you might have made up stuff about your jewelry business, that wasn't true, right? Um, but so you want to like make sure you take a look at it and, and, and tweak it, but it still saves you that initial time. Like to start off, like I know I get stuck thinking about the ideas, now all of a sudden you have an idea. So let's try an, another example, right? Um, let's say that you want to send a, a welcome email. So let's use another example. You were saying you're starting a business, ma'am? You're starting a business, right? Okay. So let's say you start an email list. What's your business? Okay. Let's um, tell it to act as a marketer and write a welcome email for my newsletter. Sorry? Yeah, like no cashways. She would like to create a logo. No, not a logo, you know. Like a two year Sorry? Yeah, yeah, you can get to play. Let's try this email one first, and I'm going to say make a model, a model out of that, right? So, so act as a marketer, write a welcome email for my newsletter. My newsletter is for environmental consulting, right? All right, let's see what this Right, so I can see it a little bit. Literally, yeah. Well, right, right now, like, uh, since I moved to this country, it's not as much of a huge obstacle to move my accent. And, you know, like, whatever I'm going, like, struggle with the people who be there. And I'm like, this, this, this is me doing this. <laughs> yeah, and, and, yeah, absolutely. And you can also put your own text in, in your native language and then say, can you put this into English? Or you can write it in bad English. Like, my mom doesn't type English or speak English very well, but like, we can go in there and say, hey, can you polish this up and edit it so it's easier to read? And so I think that's the power of it um, to like help um, businesses, right? So think about it now. We've created an, uh, an about me, we've written a welcome email, all in like the last like four or five minutes, right? <laughs> right. And so like you can go through this dramatically is usually correct. Factually is where I would say you want to make sure that it's saying the true things and it's actually about your business, but it'll get you started off there. And so you can try lots of different things. So we talked about content calendars, right? So I'm actually going to show you um, on GoDaddy, we actually published a prompt library. So these are some ideas to get you started. And I want to look for one prompt that I remember, which was calendar, right? So here's one about building a calendar. So we talked about how that's important for your business today. Let's say you want to do that. All right, who's got a business idea that they want to tell them what, do, what does their business do? Sorry? Skincare. Skincare, all right. All right, that's all I'm gonna put in there. I just changed it that I was a skincare business. So like, look at how detailed that is, right? So there you go, now you know what you're gonna be posting on for the next few months, right? And so this is what I mean about leveling the playing field. Like big companies would hire lots of people to write this. Now you can literally sit there for a half hour and have a number of like articles or ideas there. Yeah. I noticed you're using the plus version. Do you see any major advantage to using plus versus the free version? Yeah, so the advantage is that it gives you access to one of their newer models. Um, and that model is more accurate, um, but it kind of goes on for a while. It talks a lot longer. 
Um, so you kind of have to go back and be like, can you rewrite that in a shorter form or whatnot? But it, that model is better. The plus version is, well, I think $20. Um, so you can do that. So yeah, so you can try that. I, I, I experimented with it. I like I like the the newer uh, model they use in there. Um, but this uh, the one that's for free also does a lot of this, right? And so the other thing I'll point out, even is like GoDaddy, we're trying to actually um, obviously teach people about this, but also build it into our tools so that it becomes even easier to access, right? So like the early start was, hey, how do we put out a prompt library that small businesses can use, right? So you can see a ton of ideas here that you can leverage to uh, for your own business um, and come up with content um, and come up with ways of helping your business move forward, right? So there's a ton of things you can do through that. Highly recommend it and suggest that you try it out. Um, but I'm gonna, I'll take another request of like, what would you guys ask it to do for your business? And we can just try it out here live. Is it, is it right newsletters? Does it write newsletters? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What, what topic do you want to write about? The bits, concerts and the bits. Concerts? Concerts and the bits. Sorry? Concerts, concerts and events. events. Oh, concerts and events. All right. So first, that, like you can ask it to come up with a topic, right? Um, give me five topics to use in a concert and events. Right? So gives you a bunch of ideas. Oh, like arts profiles, right? Upcoming concerts and events. Um, so let's say, uh, Let's write a newsletter article. Let's pick one of these up, upcoming concerts and events um, for, um, pick an artist who has a favorite artist. EDC? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> so let's do um, Little Wayne, right? I like Little Wayne. Uh, coming to Las Vegas. Um, in May. Let's see what it comes up with. Right? So. So it tells you like the day that he's coming to Vegas and stuff like that? Like, if, if it does, that'll probably be made up because it can't, like, it doesn't know what's happening in the future, but it, it will sometimes try to pop that in. So it doesn't. There's one thing just to be aware of, like, it has what they call like a knowledge cutoff. Everything that it knows, it's, it ended in 2021. So it doesn't know anything that happened in 2022 or 2023. It doesn't know the future. No, it doesn't know the future. You can ask it to guess about it, but um, so yeah, like you can definitely use it for content for your newsletter. It's gonna give you the ideas you can write. Um, that's often some, somewhere you can struggle. Yes, sir. I run the person. You can ask about like celebrities, like. Think about this is being fed by information that's available on the internet. So if you ask about someone that's common and other people have written about, then yes, it'll tell you about them, right? Like, so we wrote this article with Lil Wayne. Let's say you don't know who that is, right? Say, who is? Okay, so that's right? what I would like to do. Remember, I asked you that. Could you do put my name in there and see what it came up with? I'm just curious. To see. <laughs> Seriously, I'm curious. <laughs> So who is, and I'll spell my name for you, Tamia, it's T-A-M-I-A, and the last name is D-O-W, and let's see what it says. D-O-W? D-O-W, right. D, right. yeah, D like David. O -W. Okay, we have your permission? <laughs> All right. Yeah, internet, everybody's watching. <laughs> All right. Oh, there you go. I'm sorry. Oh, So you need, you need more followers, so. Okay, <laughs> So I did exist before 2021. So why does it not know who I am? Yeah, it's probably just not enough content on the internet. So like it's based on like like what was on the internet and it'll just kind of parse that, right? All right. So, yeah. so I know we're at the top of our time, I believe. So um, so hopefully this was engaging and give you an idea of like how you can what you need to work on and how you can use tools like this to accelerate. Um, delivering on some of those things, right? So your website, your content, um, your calendar, the actual writing of it, the email, um, this should hopefully accelerate it. So I, 
look forward to hearing about a lot of, all of your success stories. Um, I know you guys have lots of questions. I'm happy to take them, but I just also wanted to say that for those of you that did stick around and have other things to attend to, you're free to, free to head out. Do we have this room for a few more minutes or? Yeah, okay, I, the guys in the back approved. All right, so I'll take a few more questions from the podium here. Yes. Uh, uh, what's the price for, for that? You know, what's the price? Uh, for the offers, I, I need to call a friend here. Amy, would you know the price ranges that we have for our products? It actually depends on what products um, you're interested in. So if you just want a domain, like a, you know, a my salon domain, it's going to be about 12 uh, per year. Um, if you're looking for a domain, yeah, there you go. If you're looking for a domain and, and like a basic website, that's right around $100 for a year. Um, if you want to hire someone to build um, your site and do all of your marketing and, yeah. and, and, and you know, email. basically do everything for you, that's, yeah. that's more in the like five, six hundred dollar kind of range. So it really a year or, yeah. or yeah. Uh, yeah. a year. A year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it just kind of depends on you know, it really just kind of depends okay. on what you're looking for, right. what okay. your needs are. Are you selling something? Yeah. Um, okay. You know, if you need a payment, you know, if you're looking for a payment processor, um, yeah. you know, and you're looking to accept payments, we do have the lowest fees in the industry. It's 2.3%, and it's a flat rate. Um, so you'll save an average of 20%, um, you know, against like Square or, you know, Shopify or any of the other, you know, folks that Clover, um, you know, you don't have to get into a contract with us. So, Absolutely. you know, there's, there's, you know, there's, there's really kind of pricing and products that will fit whatever, whatever your business needs. So what we really work hard to do is not oversell you something that you are not going to use. So we want to make sure that we're putting, we're giving you the right tool to accomplish, you know, what your business will accomplish. I have a question. Can you link over your website uh, as such as a people for for any reason? You you cannot keep open for a certain time. So can you record it? If the host or like for example, you the person who made the domain and making the website, uh, he's not lucky he's not lucky enough to keep the not a crossing the other yeah, so, so it, it, it will depend if it was registered to like if it's your own domain and expired, for example. Um, we are able to recover for a certain period. I think that's like a 30 or 60 days. Um, I don't know the technicals on that one. Um, but if it's registered to someone else, like that obviously gets into a tricky zone because how do we know who the real owner is, right? So, yeah. So, but um, I would suggest for that, like, it's, uh, if you call our customer service team, they'll actually look into it in, in particular and see like, you know, what the situation is in terms of that domain that you're thinking of. But in the server, the person who makes the server, I was thinking about that. Server. If they close the server, so we cannot recover the website. Was it a GoDaddy website or was it external? No, with you guys, with GoDaddy, right? Yeah. I thought with the domain, you can, if you're still paying, so you can keep your page, yeah. right? But if the person who made your domain or the website is done, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really depends on how they built it. So we'll, we'll need. Uh, my suggestion is, if you go to our table, we can give you the phone number um, to call, and then they can look into the accounts and the website and see was it built on one of the GoDaddy products. If it was, then they can they can see what can be done. But if it was built by a third party custom, then probably we won't be able to because it, you know, it was built. Because even if you are paid, yeah, they can make it about the first point. Yeah. Yeah. It, it just depends. Yeah. I recommend we're not going to be able to, we're not going to be able to do that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.